return to our regularly scheduled program. Please stand by for further details. We interrupt our program to bring you this important message. It's been stuck in my head since the I last episode. Yeah. It's a catchy song. It is. You did a great job with it. Hello. Thank you. Uh, and welcome to episode number four, got it right got this time, right. of uh, Tyler and Lynch on standby. Quick update, still on standby. We have not got a call for a new job, nope. so we're going to continue doing this. Thank you so much for hanging out. A uh, big thank you to the Comedy Here Often Podcast Network for providing the space and producer Alexi for recording. Say hi. 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 <laughs> and we got another fun episode planned today. I, I wanted to start it off with a quick question. It's a beautiful day here in Vancouver. You may not be uh, listening from Vancouver. Hopefully it's nice uh, wherever you are. Uh, and this is a very pretentious Vancouver question, and I understand that, but give me a break. Lynch, okay. are you a uh, a park or a beach person? That's your question to me? Yeah, a park or a beach person. No one else in Canada understands this question, but it's a real Vancouver. A park or a beach person? I would consider myself more of a park person. I knew it. I Why? knew it. I have this theory that old people hate the beach. And I think it's because <laughs> sitting in the sand hurts their backs, right? It does. And then you get sand everywhere. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. It's not a fun situation. I was at the park yesterday. The girlfriend and I were just having a beer. You were allowed to hang out in the park. Uh, hopefully you can wherever you're uh, listening or watching from as well. And uh, we were just having a beer and one of those people went by that was like blasting aggressive rap music. And I like aggressive rap music, but like on the whole like boom box on a strap over the shoulder type situation. <laughs> And it's just, it doesn't, it, you can't do that in a park, right? Like, it's just disrespectful. It was Kendrick. Like, there's a lot of aggressive language in there. There you know? is a lot, yes. <laughs> and those people are the worst. They ruin the park experience. But then I got to thinking, like, that's totally acceptable at the beach, right? Yeah. I, I guess. Music I'm, at the beach is yeah. fine. Music at the park is a no-go. And I think it's the age difference thing. Like, you go to the beach, it's a bunch of young people, you know, they're playing spike ball. They're tanning, whatever they're doing, making out, I don't know, young people things. And then you go to the park, it's just like a bunch of old people on benches. And all those benches are dedicated to their friends who used to sit <laughs> at that on park. the same benches. Yep. And like, you can't play Kendrick there, but you can get away with it at the beach. That's all. Um, so I figured you were a park person. And yeah, I was totally. Right. And I totally want one of those park benches when I die. Okay, so we'll put that on, we'll write so, that on the list here. Please put that down when there because- Lynch dies soon. <laughs> Well, not, not just soon. Very soon. Dedicate bench. Got it. I don't know, it does that list. cost money? Or do you have to sit on works. the bench for a certain amount of hours to claim that bench? <laughs> I think it's how many birds you fed from that bench. Like if you kept a thousand pigeons fed, then you get to keep that bench for the rest of your life. Okay. Under that, you didn't do your part. Okay. You don't get All that right. bench. I had to up my bench game then. <laughs> what about park chairs? Okay. You get to the park. There's no bench. So you got to sit on the ground with your friends. I'm assuming this is happening across Canada. Chiropractors must be killing it right now because it is the worst on your back to just sit on the ground. Right. Are you a park chair person? Do you bring a chair with you? No, that's no? like, that's too much preparation for me. Right. But you're young, right? <laughs> yeah, I like the you, beach. See, you could do it. You're, I'm a blanket, opposite. you're a blanket person. Yeah. I got, I got, I got a. I, I got a chair. Yeah, Lynch obviously <laughs> I has a chair. chair. I think I need to invest in a chair. The more I hang out in a park, the worse my back feels. You know what I got Not to jump? mention these chairs that we're sitting on right yeah. now are the worst <laughs> chairs. Like, although it's kind of good for this. It's like you don't get too comfortable, so we don't get like sleepy during the episode. But it's like if we did an hour and a half, we'd have hemorrhoids. Like it's that that. <laughs> That's true. They're not great chairs. You know what uh, I get jealous about? What people can sit cross-legged. Oh God, yeah. That's not. I don't a thing. understand how you do that. Ooh. Let me try. I've never, ever in my life been able to sit cross-legged on the ground. I like that you call it cross-legged instead of crisscross applesauce. <laughs> <laughs> That's why they say crisscross applesauce. Nope, not doing it. And I can't physically You're going to hurt it. yourself. <laughs> oh, there. See, that just looks extremely uncomfortable. How's it feel, though? I think I pulled a muscle. <laughs> See, that's what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Sitting cross-legged, no go. No go. Um, <laughs> the email is still open, Tyler and Lynch at gmail.com. Please record a voice memo and send it in there. We got a great one from the last episode and I'm kind of confused on the context of this one. Okay. Because, well, it could have to do with like traditions and it could also have to do with roommates. And we were kind of talking about both a little bit. I'm just going to play part of it. So when my best friend and I were in our first year of college, I don't entirely remember how it happened, but we started a tradition of passing around this giant red jelly dong, 
like giant red jelly dong. So she means a giant dildo, <laughs> okay. uh, but she doesn't. I don't think she uses the word dildo. So I just wanted to clarify. They got a giant red jelly dong. I, I can't even describe the size of this thing. It was massive and absolutely horrific material to ever put inside your body. It was terribly gross. <laughs> Is that not one of the worst <laughs> sentences in the world? Uh, Horrific material okay. to put inside your body. Oh, Pause no. for a second. They pass this around? And like, wh- well, I think she goes on. I don't think they pass it around like in the sense of like, oh, try it out. It's great. Uh, I think it was uh, a, a joke, right? Okay. Like, so we bought the, or we have this jelly, red jelly dong that was passed around our little friend group. And at one point it just that. ended up in my shower. And Courtney and I used to hang our shower loofahs Just off of this. Ended up in the shower. <laughs> oh, no. Magically. I have no idea how it got there. Hang our shower loofahs off of this bright red sparkly dildo <laughs> stuck to the wall of our shower. <laughs> this carried on for at least two years. And then I lost track of it. And about eight months ago, I got a text message from a friend who now lives in Longview, Alberta, saying, hey, I found this when I moved and I think it might be yours. And there's just this picture of her holding it up like with her nails by the base. (laughs) That's an aggressive visual. (laughs) Holding it up. That's seen some shit. By the nails. (laughs) Could be literally. I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) We don't know what Casey is up to. Uh, Yeah, so that's the story. And I'm confused on the context, right? Like, I'm like, we were kind of talking about, like, Easter traditions. I'm like, did this start on Easter? Is that where the context came from? Or was it talking about my grandpa's sex doll (laughs) that, like, inspired her to send in that story? Either way, thank you for the story. So they um, used to ha- put it in the shower and hang loofahs off of it? Yeah, and towels. I guess, you know. They got a strong suction cup. I know this for a fact. Okay. <laughs> you know that for a fact? Have you ever owned a ginormous dildo? Because I have. I can't say <laughs> I still do. You still? Okay. It's 16 inches long. Oh. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and uh, I bought it for a joke, and it's still sitting in my closet because I don't know what to do with a giant 16-inch dildo. It's literally like this big. It's got like weight to it. I should have brought it. It's got like, it's like girthy. It's got to be like this big around. And like, it's definitely a novelty item. I would hope it's a novelty item, actually. We should just, I'm sure, you I'm never sure know. there's people that are not using it as a novelty item, but it should be just a novelty item. But I bought it when I just started dating my girlfriend. You probably remember this. I uh, I wanted to do a joke video for her where I was like dancing to Ponies Genuine and then just a bathrobe. But then I had that kind of like shoved through the hole of my boxers at the front. <laughs> and I like had the robe closed and it was like, <laughs> bow, you know, the whole pony thing. And then I opened the robe during the video and then that's there. <laughs> and then I just kind of like flop that around. And then I just texted that to her. Uh, and shockingly, we're still together. I was just uh, going to say. <laughs> <laughs> that was like the first content I ever sent her. Uh, it was probably inappropriate. Was she like, false advertising, man? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I went to the, the the sex store to buy it. And I'm walking there and I get the thing. And it's huge. It's in this like big thing. And they don't have a bag big enough. So... It's like the top half is hanging out of the bag. Like it's impossible to hide. And I was like, I definitely should have drove. <laughs> like, so now I got to like walk home with this giant thing hanging out of the bag. I get all the way home and I realized that I had forgot my key and I was locked out of my building and I had no real way of getting in. So I had to go like knock on one of my neighbor's doors and it happened to be like this old like Russian lady that lives in my building and she's got a street side entrance. She opens the door and I'm trying to hide this like giant <laughs> dildo behind my back. And I'm like, hey, like, I know you probably see me around the building. Like, could you just let me in the gate or whatever? And she was like, sure. And then I like turned around and I watched her like make eye contact with it. And then she just said nothing. <laughs> she still let me in with like no questions asked. She okay. just went to the gate and let me in. But she just went radio silent. She did not say one more word to me. And I don't blame her. I mean, you get... Like, what did she think I was up to? Maybe she was just processing everything right right? there at that moment. She's like, can I come over? Yeah. (laughs) Well, I'm going to get him some for Christmas. (laughs) 
So uh, the lesson here is if you're buying a giant dildo, don't forget your keys um, because you'll end up in an awkward interaction with your Russian neighbor. Yeah, that is awkward. Has that ever happened to either of you? No. God, no. <laughs> no. God, no. No. You had roommate traditions, though. I actually feel bad about this in my, one of the last episodes. You wanted to talk about your bong room, and then I thought we already covered it off, and I cut you off, and it was, it was quite rude. It's okay, man. So what's your bong room story with your so, roommates? I live with like five guys in this house, and uh, we had enough bedrooms for everybody, but we wanted to turn one of the bedrooms into a bong room. And the way we did this was we played a game of NHL 94, a big tournament. Classic. Classic. That's how you settle things when you were younger and you had roommates and stuff. It was a tournament of NHL 94. It's exactly what it was. So, but the way it was, we had this tournament and the loser had to sleep on the couch for a full year because we we're going to turn the room. Nobody was allowed to go in there unless we were smoking weed. That was the, the rule for the bong room. All right. It was a tradition every day at 420 when you got home from work, we'd all gather in that room and we'd, you know, get high. I like that you gave up an entire bedroom of your place just for bongs. So someone then had to sleep on the couch. Yeah. Like, and that someone ended up being me. Oh, we really? had to sleep on the couch. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And this wasn't just like a normal couch. This couch came with us everywhere. Like if we were going to a music festival, we'd bring the couch. <laughs> And it would rain and the couch started to smell and it smelled gross already in the first place. And we'd transport that thing back and forth to different places. We were going camping, bring the couch. <laughs> like that's how hardcore this couch was. Right. It was like embedded in our lives. And that was my bed for a full year. That's fun. So back problems. This, oh, 100% this ties into back the problems. park versus beach argument from earlier. This <laughs> yeah. is why. <laughs> this is why. You are a park person now. You slept on a couch for a year. I feel like everybody when they're young sleeps on something that's not a bed though. Right? Yeah, like pretty much. When you much. move out, you don't instantly get a bed. Actually, I think this is a guy problem. Yeah. More guys than girls. It's either mattress directly on the floor for like a long period of time, if you're so lucky to have a mattress. Futons, very popular. Alexia, how many guys' houses have you gone over to and their mattress is either on the floor or they sleep on a futon? Oh, too many to count. Too, right? Yeah. Like, and no sheets? <laughs> Yo, guys, no what sheets. are you doing with sheets? Single guys are disgusting. I remember how gross... You know what's even worse than all that is a single dude's microwave. Oh. Have you ever oh. looked in a guy who lives alone's microwave? Yeah. <laughs> oh, like it's a, just a science experiment gone wrong. Like that's where coronavirus came from is the inside of a single dude's <laughs> microwave. There's just so much disgusting shit going on in there. And like, I remember when I first moved out, like I had a futon and then I got a box spring, but I still didn't have a mattress. I got a free box spring. Okay. So then I just put the futon mattress on top of the box spring. <laughs> I don't think this is how that's supposed to work. And I slept on that for like years till I could afford a mattress. Really? Yeah. So oh, man. chiropractors, <laughs> we're keeping them in business. I had a buddy who used to just like turn the microwave on and he said that would just kill all the germs inside the microwave. <laughs> he put it on for like 20 minutes. Just oh. like, all right, just leave it. And no, it's not how it works. That's not but how it works at all. No, you cake it right on there so you can't <laughs> get it off. And like, I don't know about you, but like my mom growing up with the microwave was very, always very adamant. Like put a paper towel over it so it doesn't splatter everywhere. Did you get that rule in your houses? Yeah. Yeah, I had that. But and you then, just forget it when you move out and you're, it's your own microwave for some reason. <laughs> you're just like, nah. Yeah, I don't need to. I don't need to. But then your mom will come over and she'll look through everything. I don't know if this was your mom did, but my mom did this. And then she ended up buying you one of those little covers for your food yeah. that the top part would always dip in your food. Yes. And then you wouldn't clean that either. <laughs> so, you know, but it stopped everything from spraying all over the place. That's one thing that I noticed during the pandemic was just like how gross dudes can be. Because like we're pretty OCD, both I'm you very and I. OCD. Our places are pretty clean now. Yeah. And I think like after living with horrible roommates, it probably helped that. But as people started to post more and more content from home, all I could just think about while watching these videos is like, clean your place. You know what I mean? Like, this is hilarious content, but like the pile of shit in the background is very distracting, you know? Like, and the thing yeah, is, it's not like better. You, That's the message here. Do better. We can do better. <laughs> it's not like you don't have time. Right. We're in a pandemic, there's nothing to do. Right. Just clean up a little bit. It's not, do it. Okay. Do it. <laughs> Come on. Um, we wanted to start a new segment on this episode. It's called Search History. Do, 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 search History. history. Do, do, do. Um, and this is something we wanted to do for a little while. It's a pretty simple concept. We're just going to go through our recent search history, uh, all in order here, and discuss what's going on in there. 
Alexi, we asked you if you would be willing to participate, so we're going to lead with you. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Are you willing to share your search history with us? I am. Okay. I what am. is the last thing that you searched? <laughs> um. Well, I have a few different things. Okay. So the most recent one is like not so radical, but it's classical or classic male opera songs. Oh. I was looking for something specific, and okay. it was it was the Rigoletto Act 3. Just, just so I could listen right, alone in my yeah, of course, yeah, I got that on three. Yeah, I got yeah, that. Yeah. I got the Apple course, Music, Spotify, on Laserdisc. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you're looking for classic male opera. Yeah. Now, are you an opera fan? Uh, not particularly. I just, you know, you're in a mood for opera to play alone in your apartment while right. you. <laughs> That's a mood that yeah, it strikes me all the time. That's, I know it's, exactly. It's kind of chaotic, <laughs> right? <laughs> What are you doing when you're just at your place listening to opera? What's the, give me the, paint the picture. What's the vibe? Um, well, it's like, it's like kind of uh, low light with like a little bit of light coming through the mm. window. Um, doing Useful. the dishes furiously. Right. Listening to opera, thinking about life. <laughs> <laughs> did you find the song that you were looking for? I did. Oh, yeah, so it I all did. worked out. <laughs> I added it to my liked song so that when I listen to it on shuffle, I can listen to normal music followed by opera whenever I'm around a friend. And that's the embarrassing thing that's going to happen. <laughs> did you know that Lynch was alive when they invented opera? <laughs> <laughs> I've got a question. What? Who makes money? Say if you're, you're downloading stuff from Mozart. Who's the person who makes the money off the Mozart song? I think that's all royalty free now. Like there's that, that, uh, I forget what the, the timestamp is, but it's something like when a song is like 60 years old or something, it becomes like free use for anybody. Oh, okay. I think it's, okay. It's 70 years after the person dies. Oh, 70 years that's after the person. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You work for a record label. You should know that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 70 years after a person dies. So Mozart, nobody's making money off Mozart. Okay. Well, yeah, and you can use it guy. for anything. We could play an entire Mozart song right now and they wouldn't take it, the video down or anything like that. Okay. All yeah. right. Good to know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but back to Lynch being around for the invention of opera. <laughs> Uh, okay. He was at the first opera concert and you actually performed. Uh, and he, Lynch is a historic male opera figure. Why don't you <laughs> just show Alexi? Maybe maybe you could add some of the music to your playlist. Do you, what, some of my opera? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> it's just a little taste could for you. Could you do there. dishes to that? Oh yeah! Oh yeah! yeah, yeah I, told you. <laughs> I also like the effort there. Like I like how you turned a little bit pink towards the yeah, end. Yeah, I know. You had to really give it from down below, right? Oh, right. Yeah. yeah. Opera's all diaphragm. Like, it is. It all, yeah, yeah. It doesn't come from the throat. It's got to come from deep. Plus, yeah. I didn't have a warm up reel. Like you know, it's just like, hey, just get going on that. So. Right. Yeah. We didn't give you much time. Yeah. But so, if you're looking for new opera artists, I have to add it to the playlist. Make sure you check out. <laughs> this is the guy right here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what else was in your search history? Anything Anything else you wanted or willing to share? Yeah. So um, because we can't travel right now, yeah. uh, I've been doing a lot of Google Maps vacationing. Right. Um, and so I started out at Costa Rica, Ooh. which is nice. Um, yeah. And then went to Santiago, Chile. Ooh. You know, some nice vineyards maybe around there. Um, and then Hattiesburg. <laughs> Where's that? I think that's in Louisiana or Mississippi. I think okay. it's Mississippi. And then I went to Street View for that because I wanted to see what was going on. Is there. this just like a small southern town? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, it's like it's like a like a Civil War town. Oh. I just wanted to see what the people there were up yeah, to. Yeah, with like the reenactment people. Those people are <laughs> that crazy. That fun, actually. <laughs> right? The reenactment stuff. Yeah. Yeah, except use paintball guns. Yeah, that's you know, like make should, it somewhat right? legit. Or at least pellet guns, something. So you know, it hurts like, a little bit, so little you're bit getting really into it. You add some excitement to the whole thing, for sure. But then, uh, so what's going on in, Heid what's it in? H Hattiesburg? Hattiesburg, what's going on there? Nothing, not oh. much. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> As it turns out. But then I, I figured, so the last one, I went to Street View for this one, Compton. <laughs> oh. What's going on in Compton? Right, you, you, gotta, know, you gotta know what's on these streets. Right. <laughs> <You're> like, <laughs> <laughs> Turns out not much for Google. <laughs> no. <laughs> Do they have the full, they would have the full street view. Like you could just click around and walk around Compton. Yeah, I would imagine yeah. so. That's a safe way to explore the neighborhood. It's the safest right? way to, to explore Compton. <laughs> huh. That's a fun Google search. We got a tweet because uh, we were talking about small town statues in the last million episodes. Uh, I just got a funny one that I wanted to read. It's, uh, it's from Sheree. She said, just listen to episode two and thought you should know about the Moose statue in Manning, Alberta. The town slogan is Land of the Mighty Moose. And when they put in this statue, people quickly realized it was a moose head on a horse's body. 
Oh, and if for you, real? Yeah, yeah. Take a moment, everybody, and just Google it right now. It is it is clearly a moose head on a horse body. Where is this at again? Uh, this is in Manning, Alberta. I don't know if they couldn't afford a moose body, just a horse body. Or, you know, maybe it's a recycled horse from like a, a racetrack or something. Um, but yeah, it's a moose head on a horse body. So that's a fun statue that they messed up. I actually got a <laughs> message from uh, listener Jay. Yeah. Who said that uh, we inspired him and his girlfriend to go on a shitty small town tour this summer. Oh, oh. nice. That's so, a good pandemic activity. Yeah. So that's yeah. what they're planning on doing. Oh, they should report back. Okay. Jay, you said Jay, Jay if you're listening. Uh, record some audio from each one. Just give us a little review of each and we could plug it into the show over the summer because uh, I'm fascinated. Take the review very seriously, though. We take our roadside attractions. I had to give him a little tip because he was planning on going to Boys Van to check out Tommy. Uh. And if you are doing the same thing, do not get a picture of you hugging the leg of Tommy the Turtle. Locals piss on it. Oh, so that's just a heads up. (laughs) That makes sense. So why would you want tourism? Just ruin it by pissing on everything. It's right by the bar. Ooh, cool. What do they expect? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, come on. <laughs> well, that's Alexi's search history. Is there anything else you wanted to share? Yeah, one more. Okay. Um, it, it's me going down a rabbit hole. Uh, I, I looked up the Amish. What are the, the Amish, Amish. I'm fascinated by the Amish. What are they doing? What are they up to? You know, it's building what? furniture, mostly. <laughs> yeah. How do you find out anything about the Amish? Are they not allowed to have computers? Uh, well, they, apparently they like do sometimes talk to like outside people and like let them in. So like I watched in my search history, there's a lot of documentaries about the Amish. Hmm. <laughs> they let people in and then they act all weird and who knows what's really going on. Because there's like <laughs> different groups like that, right? Like there's Hutter- Hutterites, there's Mennonites, there's Amish. And I don't quite fully know the difference between all of them. I know like in Ontario, there was a lot of Mennonite people in certain areas. So you'd yeah. see them like in their horse-drawn carriages. And I believe Mennonites are like Full, no electricity, like no yeah. nothing. I think, I, think it's, I think it's Hutterites, aren't they? I don't, I don't no, know. No, because Hutterites, because yeah. I lived in Wainwright, Alberta, and there was a Hutterite colony not far, and they would come into town. They had vehicles, they had cell phones, they had because they would do like a lot of business with the radio station I was working at. They would advertise their like markets on the air, so they come in and like they had better iPhones than I had. <laughs> I remember like, my grandma I was used still to on do... a BlackBerry at that point. I was BBMing people oh and like. <laughs> These Hutterites had full-blown iPhones. It was very confusing. I know there's differences between them all, but I'm not quite sure exactly what they all are. My, my grandma used to do a whole bunch of trading with them all the time oh. growing up in South uh, Eastern Manitoba there. And they would always give her chickens and dandelion wine. Dandelion oh. wine. Which is disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, I have a horrendous story about this, and I'm not sure if I should share it, but I've talked myself into this corner, so now we're here. Um, in a lot of these colonies, there's a problem with inbreeding because uh, just logistically, they're all pretty related. So to avoid this, they a lot of the time bring in outside people um, to basically act as like a, I guess you wouldn't call it a surrogate, but like a male donor it's like a circuit breaker <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah sure okay. uh and that was offered to me one time oh yeah really the, the people that would come to the radio station asked if i would come and <laughs> that right <Yeah>. there <laughs> <laughs> did you do it yeah no, did you? no no like i was pretty poor but i wasn't that poor at that point i was like i don't need this whatever 60 dollars or whatever they're gonna pay me 60 60 bucks? Bucks? I, don't, I don't know if it was 60 dollars but i remember it being not enough to do it i was like no 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 That's, i'm good thank I, you i like i appreciate the offer and it makes sense i'm right in their wheelhouse so like i'm hitler's wet dream like blue-eyed <laughs> blonde like and they still follow those rules pretty strict so i get yeah. why they came after me but Oh, man. it was awkward. Just like, think that's of a all weird the, question. the Father's Someone, Day like, cards and stuff that you would get. So many ties that you'll never wear. Dandelion <laughs> wine every Christmas uh, from whoever, Jacob. Uh, <laughs> so that was a real thing. <laughs> so I hope that helps with your, your Amish search. You it have does. more to look up now. What's yeah. the difference? I want you next episode to bring the, a full breakdown of what the difference between those three groups are. Oh, I will. I'm really excited. Uh-huh. I, I'm always like really confused. I, when I was in uh, Ontario the last time I did see like, I don't exactly know what group they were from, mm-hmm. but like the women all have the like the typical like prairie dresses and the hair and everything. And then the men just look like regular dudes. Right. Like just dressed in like t-shirts and like cool logos and stuff. I'm like, what? Like, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, it doesn't seem like 
It's all fair. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to like uh, attack anybody here, but it doesn't seem like the most progressive group. Yeah. So you know, like, like, uh, I don't know. Kind of, uh, it kind of checks out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I have some reading to do. <laughs> Fascinating. Lynch. My I'm, Google uh, search. This is something, and the amount of time we've worked together, we've never gone through each other's search history. So I'm, I'm quite interested to know what you're looking up on the regular basis. Well, I'm, uh, I'm bad at the internet. Yes. As you know. Is, yeah. Um, and my last Google search history was how do I do Instagram reels? Because you asked me to do this and I don't know why, but I just don't want to ask you because it seems like I annoy you every time I ask you some sort of question when it comes to any sort of social media. It is very frustrating because I, like I put all the clips together and yep. like I send it to you and it's labeled like Lynch real. All you got to do is download it and post it. It's as simple as that. And then you come in with questions of that. And I'm like, I just spent the last hour putting this together. You can't figure out how to post it. Well, I didn't know the <laughs> difference between that and a story and whatever the other thing in the corner is. And what do you mean? What are the other thing? The other in the thing in the corner of like uh, the app, like, you know, where there you have your picture and then there's this plus sign. Yeah. That's a story. I had to Google how to do a reel because I didn't want to ask you about this the other day. And you messed it up, by the way. I did didn't want to call you. A, you did post a reel. It is up there. Uh, but how, you, how did I mess it up? You didn't share the like preview image to your feed, which I told you to do. Uh, so it's just living that. in your reels. And that's why it's not getting as many likes. But and like, you that's, tried. That's you like tried. the last four <laughs> things of my Google search history is all these questions that I have for that. Okay, give me another internet question that you were looking up. Um, my other internet question was, what's the difference between a reel and a story. Okay. I thought I explained Aww. that to you as well. You try, no. you did, but I just didn't grasp it. <laughs> <laughs> Tell you the truth. Okay. Yeah, you yeah. know, so it's like those kind of questions for me, I, I have to Google them because I don't want to ask you because I know you get pissed at it. I'm a very calm person. And I like to think that if you reached out, I would help. You'd get upset though. I would be annoyed. You'd be, a, you'd be furious in your it's head. It's not hard to figure out, you know, like... <laughs> I'm glad you realized you could just Google it because you used to just ask. And then that would cross my mind. I'm like, can you not just look this up yourself? <laughs> so I'm glad you've taken some initiative See? and uh, you're helping to promote the show online uh, on your own time without me having to get you literally on the phone and give you a, a, a complete walkthrough every step of the way on how to post something. And then my other uh, Google search that I had recently. By the way, we talked about how when you're on mushrooms, you post photos on Instagram all yeah, the time. Yeah, I don't know how, how come all you of can a sudden? Instagram when you're on mushrooms, but not just on a regular <laughs> like Tuesday morning work day. Because I think it opens up your mind when you're on mushrooms and it, you know, you're able to do things better. Right. So I don't sure. know if I should constantly be on mushrooms, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> a microdose daily. Uh, I don't know. Maybe. Um, but my other Google search history is I went to that Van Gogh. There's a, a Van Gogh uh, thing going on here. Oh, at this the looks convention so center. cool. Yeah. It's yeah, very, yeah. And I was reading reviews on it. And then I came across this story about how if you look at uh, Van Gogh's Starry Night and you look at the, the hypnotizing wheel, right. it moves. Oh. So like Google the, uh, the hypnotizing wheel. And then watch that for like 20 seconds and then look at Starry Night. The whole painting will move. So I figured that maybe if I tried to hypnotize myself before I went to the Van Gogh art exhibit that they got. <laughs> Which that is at home everything, trying to, pause. You're at home trying to hypnotize yourself. Yeah, I was looking up. <laughs> I Googled how I could hypnotize myself before I went just so I could like go to this thing and everything would be moving and I'd be like having like a little bit of a trip. I didn't want to do drugs or anything going to this so thing I because people dress up. Right. <laughs> it's a it's a really cool exhibit if you haven't no like if you're not in Vancouver and you haven't just Google it's, it's it. It's going across Canada. This yeah, summer. yeah. It's touring. You should definitely check it out. They have these like big walls. It's kind of like the big backdrop that we're on right now, except all the paintings are up there and they move and stuff. It's pretty awesome. Yeah, it, it is. It seems like dope. a great place to do drugs and go and have a good time. Uh, I want to know though was the exact wording in the Google search how to hypnotize yourself. Yep, one hundred percent it was. And it didn't there's got to be some interesting results for how to hypnotize yourself. Well, there's like, it takes you to like YouTube videos. It's not like Romaine or anything. He's not going to get you to stop smoking or whatever, but there's right. a guy on there that'll try to hypnotize you. It didn't work. No, no. The exhibit was still fun though. It was, it was fun. Yeah. It, was, it probably would have been a lot cooler with being hypnotized or drugs. You believe in all that <laughs> stuff though. You're like a big medium psychic believer. We've yeah, talked about totally this before. Am. Do you believe in mediums or psychics? 
Uh, well, sometimes it's like undeniable, but I am a skeptic. Yeah, sometimes- I'm definitely in the skeptic category. I feel like they're really good at like manipulating people. Like yeah. that, it, like it's not necessarily that they're reading minds. It's that they're like they're setting you up to get answers out of you and then feeding them back to you later. They're like taking little notes and like your delivery and the way you talk about things and then peppering that in. You're like, whoa, they know everything. And they're like, no, I think they're just like master manipulators. Like, I don't think they're psychic. I don't, I don't know if I believe in it. I'm a bit of a skeptic. See, and I was in your shoes until I went and I didn't say anything because I just was like, I don't, I'm not going to feed into you. Right. You figure it out. You're the psychic here. You're the medium. And, but you don't know you're doing it. That's what I mean. But the thing is, I didn't say anything and there's no way in hell that she would have known what she told me. She basically said, because my dad had passed away and we're at a medium. And this lady was just like, basically like, you have a coin on your wall that's got your dad's RCMP regimental number on it, right? And I was just like, Whoa. first off, how the hell do you know that? Because there's is only weird. a couple of people in my life who know that I have this thing. Right. And then the weird part was my brother had come out, uh, this is when I was living in Calgary, he'd come out for a golf trip. And while we were both there, this is the first time that we were really together since my dad had passed. And in the middle of the night, that coin fell and slammed on the ground. And it had never, ever done that before. And she even said that. She's like, when that coin fell off your shelf, that was your dad just saying, hey. And I was just like, whoa, holy crap. That's crazy. Right? And it's it's very out of character for you to believe in something like this. I don't believe That's in a what, lot of things. Right. That's why I like... You make me more of a believer than anybody else just because of, yeah, just it, it's not in your wheelhouse to believe this. But you like genuinely think that that was real. Yeah. And she also said, too, at the time, this is when we were in Calgary. She's like, you're going to have a job opportunity in either Toronto or Vancouver. And then? And then we got a job opportunity in Toronto, which we turned down. Yeah. And then we came out to Vancouver. Both happened. It and, is kind of weird, right? Oh, yeah, that is weird, actually. Right? Yeah. And this is before we even knew about those job opportunities. I got an email uh, and I don't have the name open right now, unfortunately, but we did get an email to Tyler Lynch at gmail.com of uh, someone who has a friend who's a medium that uh, wants to be a guest on the show. So we should set that up and get a medium to come on here. Really? And like, I just want to test the theory, you know, let's, I don't know. It's fascinating. Because I don't really open up a lot about What about tarot cards? Is it tarot cards or tarot? 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 My mom used to do tarot cards when I was a kid. Oh, really? Uh, But she just did it for fun or did she actually know how to do them? Yeah, and I think she was bad at it and I think she ruined my belief in all of this because I'm like, (laughs) if my mom's doing it, like, what? Like, it is not real, you know? I had an ex-girlfriend do tarot cards on me as well and it really just seemed like it turned into a situation that was like, here's all the things you're doing wrong in this relationship and they're just coming up in the cards. You know? Like, <laughs> and I was like, I think that this is, there's deeper, I don't know if this is accurate. I feel like you're just calling me out on all my shit right now. <laughs> this is just a way to like, yeah, hey, yeah. you need to start doing this and this and this or else I will have the death card and leave. Yeah. <laughs> It is like kind of like a lot of power of suggestion, which is crazy. But right. also like someone read like my tarot cards one time and it was like spot on. So weird. It's so weird. Like, I mean, I guess if you're good at it. Right. Right. But it's crazy. Or <laughs> a great way to make your partner change their bad habits. Yeah. <laughs> it can be uh, accurate or that. Um, you send them an e-transfer before you go and just be like, say this and this and this and this. <laughs> <laughs> That's like astrology. Are you a big like astro- uh, Is it astrology or astronomy? <laughs> What's the? I think it's astrology. <laughs> astrology. Are you a big astrology person? Like you're, you believe in your sign and all that kind of stuff. Lately, I have yeah. been. I've always been a skeptic, but um, it, especially like in relationships, right? Um, I've like somebody like I've been talking to people that know a bit more than me about that, and I tell them my sign and then the people that I'm, that I've been seeing in the past, their sign. And they're like, Oh, well then your relationship is going to be like this, 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 and this. And it's always like spot on. That's so it's weird. crazy. Yeah. And I know that there's like a lot of power of suggestion there, but like also there'll be things like where I'm weird and out there, which I am. And then it, it's really, it's crazy. <laughs> I have a couple astrology things. One, I was trying to find a legitimate therapist <laughs> and I was doing a consultation on the phone with this therapist. And she asked me what my sign was um, because she wanted to take a look at my astrological chart before our first therapy session. And I was like, 
are you a therapist? You know, like that doesn't seem legit. No, not at all. Not for a real therapist. So that session didn't happen. And then at the beginning of the pandemic, I think it was the Toronto Star, the newspaper, they had to put out like a, a revision or an apology because they uh, they admitted that they pre-write all of their uh, horoscopes. So the horoscopes mm. came out after the lockdown and a bunch of them were like, today's a good day to go meet with your friend. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, yeah. yeah. And I was like, oh, that really shows that these aren't accurate too. Yeah. Like you're like, you wrote those two weeks ago. Like, how do you know what the stars are going to be saying on this day if you wrote it three weeks in advance? Uh, so that really put a hole in the whole astrology theory for me as well. Oh yeah. Uh, anything else in your search history that you wanted to cover? Those are my two main ones. Okay. Yeah. Everything else is just all like technical. Mine, mine was an interesting search that led to no results. Okay. The last thing I Googled late last night, uh, after a couple wobbly pops was, Oh God. Wobbly pops. How old are you? (laughs) (laughs) Jesus was, are more people losing AirPods because of masks? Oh. I had this like theory. I was like, you have your AirPods in, but you're taking your mask on and off all day long. Are more people losing AirPods because of this? That was my thought. I Googled it. There are zero results for that. No one is talking about it. No, one, There's no scientifically peer-reviewed papers. There's, no, there's not even a New York Post article on it. No, n- nothing. Uh, so I don't know if it's accurate, but it feels like it could be. I could see that happening. You flip it off. Yeah. Your, there's your been quite a few times out. I flip mine out with the mask. So I'm just like, there's gotta be more AirPods getting lost because of masks. Oh yeah. That was the whole thing. That's terrifying. Are you an AirPod wearer? Yes. I'm, yes. I'm We're obsessed. all AirPod wearers in the room. We're safe. <laughs> <laughs> People love to make fun of the AirPod wearing, but like, God, I love them. Oh. I really do. Like uh. they're not the best quality headphones, but like, just for when you're on the go. Like and they're just convenient. Not having a cord, so convenient. Yeah. yeah. You tap it and press play. Maybe you're listening on AirPods right now and you're like, oh, I got to walk in and buy a Popsicle or whatever at the convenience <laughs> store. So you tap, tap, pause, tap, tap, play again. Love oh. it. Absolutely love it. That's how you, I need to learn about the controls of AirPods. I See? just kind of got mine like. That's like my ago. Google search right there. <laughs> That's what I do. I do things like Alexa, that. Alexa, you're supposed to be young. You're supposed to get this stuff. You're supposed to teach us all about this. I waited. I was, I wanted to, I didn't want to buy into it. And then eventually I like gave in and I was like, why haven't I like bought these like years ago? A great investment. Incredible. Some of the, one of the interesting things that, uh, like functions you can have is that it'll Siri will read your text out loud to you I love that. <laughs> via the AirPod. Me too. But I ran into like an awkward situation uh, right before everything got shut down again. I was at a coffee shop and I had my AirPods in and my girlfriend sent me a, uh, how do I, a very loving text. Okay. A very uh, risque, risque text. <laughs> risque is a great word for it. She sent me a very risque text and I was just in the coffee shop typing and it's like, Jessica sent you a message and then boom, and then Siri read the message to me and I was like, oh my God, like, and it was pretty graphic. And I was like, is this how people get into anime? You know, like, like, <laughs> like this robot voice was pretty hot. Like it was pretty, it was, it was interesting. Oh, yeah, so but it's weird another like hour or so in this coffee too. shop. Just yeah, here. yeah, yeah. And I was like, <laughs> well, cross my legs. <laughs> just going to chill for a couple of minutes. <laughs> just going to chill. But I'm pretty sure that's where the anime thing starts. <laughs> we had a suggestion uh, that we're going to get to in a little bit, uh, but uh, someone messaged in that you should review anime. No, I'm not reviewing <laughs> anime. Oh, yeah. No, no, oh, yeah. That sounded super creepy the way you said that, too. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> well, I don't no. really know that much about anime. Not so I'd all love to... anime is porn. But isn't it just like cartoons? Right. Like Sailor yeah. Moon stuff? Is Sailor yeah. Moon anime? I yeah. think so. I think and so. I, think so. I believe it all comes from like the, the manga style like uh, there's there's a connection there you should do a review get the whole history i would love to learn more about it yeah the history stop coring me here guys <laughs> both of you right now okay and I, don't, I don't believe that somebody actually said you get literature review anime someone definitely did i forget that i it's a huge a thing bunch it of is requests. a massive thing but <laughs> i don't know if popular. i can sit down and do that um on the airpod front as well though one result that did come up is a story i kind of forgot about which was uh, the guy who swallowed his AirPods. Oh, Did you I hear this? That. This guy no. while he was sleeping swallowed an AirPod, <laughs> just one of them, but it would still work. So he could like press play. If he took the other one out of the case, put it in his ear, press play, it would play inside his stomach still. The Bluetooth would go through his stomach. Weird. Yeah, yeah. What? So he uh, 
Well, I believe he had to pass that in probably yeah. the natural way. But yeah, he. Uh, <laughs> Do you still use that afterwards? Because well, they're expensive. Yeah, I don't. Know. They're expensive, but they're like heavy duty. Like I've dropped them, and like apparently you can get them wet and everything. Yeah. Like I would be surprised. Back when I was going to the gym many moons ago. <laughs> Uh, I would hit the sauna after a, a nice workout and I would take them in there and I was always worried about them and they were fine. I'm like soaked in sweat and like, I don't bring my phone in there. I just wear them in there and it was fine. I always wondered about that. Like I used to shower in them, which felt like a good way to get electrocuted. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I decided you to shower stop showering. Your, your in AirPods, AirPods in? Yeah. It's fun. Like you gotta get, get up early, especially when we were doing mornings. It's like, I had to get ready in silence. I like to like listen to something in the morning, but I can't wake up my girlfriend. So AirPods in the shower. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. I like never it. thought you could do that with those. Oh, I think it was dangerous. I'm like, I, I have a tanning membership and every time I go in, I'm like, I wonder if I can like wear these in the tanning bed, but I never have. Cause I feel like that's crossing a line. Right. And then you just get the stem, <laughs> yeah. ta- the stem tan line on your ear. <laughs> that shows that you're rich yeah. right there. You're out and about. And it's like, Oh, that person's got AirPods. Look at the, <laughs> look at the AirPod tan line. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Search history. This is fun. I like going through our search histories. We got a message, though, uh, on the review front. Okay. Now, the last episode, you reviewed Justin Bieber Peaches, a request from me, and uh, the first Harry Potter movie. Yeah. People loved it. And we asked what else you should review. We got a message from Tiny Tot Pop Shop on YouTube. That's the YouTube channel. (laughs) Nice. This is like a thousand likes. I don't know exactly what Tiny Tot Pop Shop is, but shout out. Uh... She wanted you to review Bling Empire on Netflix. Now, I got to admit, I love this show. It is a com- it is complete trash television, but sometimes it just makes you feel good about yourself to watch horrible people on TV. Am I right? Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty much that. Now, if you haven't watched the show, don't worry. You're going to just just take it away and explain what this is. You haven't watched it either, right, Alexi? No, I haven't. Okay. So first off, when you asked me to do this, I didn't even think it was a show because he said, oh, it's a new show, whatever. So I'm going through my Netflix and I can't find it. So I had to do the search, which I know how to do the search. Killing it. So Look at this I know, tech right? Guy over here. Right? Uh, and it showed that I only had a 64% match for this show on Netflix. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it's that not my own. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> if, it, if it came back and you matched 100% with Bling Empire, I would truly question our friendship and your like television watching habits because yeah, 64% is honestly even a little high. I don't know what else you're watching on there, but yeah, I, I had to search for it regardless, yeah. but um, it's kind of like a reality TV show of crazy rich Asians. Yes, that's a good way to put it. So pretty much along par with that. But the first episode I watched was absolutely insane. Now these people are loaded. And the one thing that I found interesting is uh, we found out what the Red Power Ranger is actually up to. Oh, yeah. I forgot that he's in this. Yeah. So the Red Power (laughs) Ranger is a part of this. And this guy. Not as a Power Ranger. No, not as a Power Ranger. Let's just quickly explain. It's just like a (laughs) junk reality TV show that just follows around these crazy rich people in their insane lives. Yeah. But the Red Power Ranger is like. As a human, not as the Power Ranger. <laughs> Although I wish he was in the show as the Power Ranger. That'd be so much more fun. But he's just like a human dating one of them. Yeah. yeah and yeah. the thing is, the girl that he's dating is this this chick who used to be married to a guy who uh, right now is in jail for running the biggest computer scam scheme in North America. Right. Of and, all time. But somehow she came out of it. Scott very free. Very rich and scot free. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's uh-oh. like a billionaire. And you're like, well, where did that money come from? <laughs> It's grandmas absolutely. that you send weird emails to and they fell for it. Like that's the thing. Like, how did you get so loaded? Well, obviously with a scam, but how do you, are you not in jail? Right. And then how do you end up dating a power ranger at the end of all of that? That's the other thing. Yeah. And that's how like the show starts as like some hot and steamy, like pseudo sex scene with power ranger guy. I'm like, what the hell is happening here? Yeah. So I had to continue watching this because then it shows this one lady. I can't remember her name. Is it Anna? Anna, Anna she's she's like this super loaded, half Russian, half Asian, older lady. She kind of looks like a crazy version of Stifler's mom. Yeah, the whole show is filled with the worst plastic surgery. And like, what is it with rich people and not getting good work done? Like, I, you have so much money 
and they get the worst surgeries for yeah. some reason. It doesn't make any sense. They have the worst hair plugs. They get the worst fillers. Like they just look so. And I, it, I don't know if it's just because it's over the top, like they do too many, or if they're just going to bad surgeons. I don't understand, but she is legitimately terrifying to look at. She kind of looks like she's got like the mouth of like the Joker. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. In a way. Yeah, or like when you ate too many freezies in the summer yeah. and you cut up your lips and they're like, <laughs> they're right on the sides. Ah, like, you know? That's her whole face all the time. <laughs> But the best part is like the amount of times that they try to one up each other with certain brand names and how much money they have and stuff like that. Take, for example, this Anna lady, the, the Russian Asian lady. Crazy one. And she decided to take one of her other rich friends for dinner, which doesn't sound that bad. Right? No, You're sorry. going for dinner. But <laughs> with your rich friend, she jumps on a PJ, a private jet, and they fly to Paris. And this is the, the girl who's dating Red Power Ranger. So Red Power Ranger and her go along with the crazy Russian lady over to Paris for dinner. For Private dinner. jet to Paris for dinner. From L.A. Oh my and God. these are the same people that are on Twitter like, stop climate change. Yes. I'm going to do my part. Please <laughs> sign my change.org petition. Trying to be, you know, these social justice warriors online. Meanwhile, they're taking private jets for dinner. It's crazy. Yeah. And yeah. that's when you learn how big of an ass Power Ranger guy is. Power right. Ranger guy <laughs> went for a nap. The other two decided to go and do what rich people do and go and shop at all these expensive stores that they shut down just for them. And then Power Ranger guy gets upset when he wakes up and she's not there and then phones and like reams her out. So right off the hop, I'm like, oh, I don't I don't like Power Ranger guy at all, man. Yeah, it seems like a real douche. If anything, he should like assemble his team, get like the, the green, the blue <laughs> and yellow and pink and get all together and, you know assemble and do something productive with their life. Instead, he's phoning her up and screaming and yelling at her. Yeah, he, uh, can we just cover off the store thing real quick too that you can just it? kind of breezed over there? Like they legit are going to like Paris and going to like the Gucci store and like all these high-end designers oh and they God. shut down the stores for them so they can like <laughs> private shop. And it's just like, how much does that cost? You know yeah, I mean? exactly, right? They threw us trying to throw a, like a Lunar New Year party in the show and they shut down Rodeo Drive just for their own party, like all of Rodeo Drive in LA, which is the Gucci store and all that kind of stuff. Tiffany, Rolex, all that shit. And they shut down the whole street. They rented out though. I don't even, that's gotta be millions of dollars. Like just and to have like this street party for their out. friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's not like a lot of people there. It's wild yeah. how much money these people have. And you got to breezed over that her like, her family has the money from like guns or okay, bombs so, or something. So the the Russian lady, she's her family sells bombs. That's how bombs. she got the money. Yeah, for for oh. her parents selling bombs and artillery, probably to small countries or maybe even the United States, Russia. Yeah, but you know, <laughs> oh, let's not get political. Okay, <laughs> I'm just saying, yeah. selling bombs and that's how you make your crazy coin. Yeah. That's where all the money comes from. They're like evil, horrible people, like the whole show. But it's so fun to watch them. It's crazy. This one part made me laugh my ass off because this one lady and, and this guy go into um, the Ducati motorcycle store. Yes. And the reason why she wants to, she wants to buy uh, this super high speed bike just in case there's an earthquake, there's fires or there's a nuclear bomb. So she can get on this bike and hightail it out to the airport to get on a private jet to get the hell out of there oh, if need great. be. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I don't blame <laughs> what her What are for you, that. The Rock? Stop it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Come on. <laughs> I, don't, I don't blame her for it. You need an exit strategy, you know? What are they, have, you, have you ever watched that Netflix show Preppers? Uh, yeah. Oh, I watch yes. Preppers all the time. That is hilarious, but some of them are onto something. They are. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, I respect those. Well, not all of them. Some of those people I respect. I respect. But they're like to buy a Ducati just to go to the airport to jump on your private jet to hightail it out of town? Holy shit. I have nothing in common with any of these people. No. The only person I have in common with is this one guy. I think his name's Kevin. He comes from like Philadelphia. It's like fresh Prince of Bel Air Asian style, where he just goes out to to LA to he he's a male model. He's a good looking dude, very and, handsome. And um, he doesn't have money at all, but he somehow ends up with this group of super rich people and is hanging out with them. And I thought at first he was like just some guy who moved to LA from Philadelphia and was just like couch surfing. 
Right, trying to make it in the L.A. model circuit. Yeah, but I thought he was like living on these people's couches for a while and just jumping from, because he's in every scene. This guy is always with these people. Yeah. It's like, you're not doing any modeling. No, and then they gift him really expensive yeah. stuff. It's like, what the hell, man? Yeah, they're just paying for this whole guy's life. How do you get involved with that? I want to do something like that. I feel like it's like a sugar baby situation. What do you mean by that? For him? Yeah, like I think like these, like the crazy rich ladies in the show are funding that guy's life to keep him around for... He's a funny guy. He's a, he's a funny guy, and he's very good looking. He's a very handsome lad. Yeah, yeah. So I think they're just paying him to have a good looking person around. I want to... Uh, I don't have the looks. No, you definitely <laughs> I don't. Have don't. The looks. You, what, you were going to say? I, I want to say, a- I want to do this, but, you know... <laughs> you want to be a sugar baby? <laughs> <laughs> I worked in email an old folks home one at time. if you are looking, if and you know how email works. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, you know, maybe later on in life I will wipe your ass. I don't know. Depends how much money you've got. Speaking of psychics and stuff in LA, that was one thing I noticed when I went to LA was just how there's a psychic on every corner. Did is any have you, either of you been there? I've been to LA, yeah. They're everywhere there. And all I could think when I was there, and like every block has a psychic, I was just like, there is a huge market in telling Instagram influencers are gonna be famous. Like that's all I get. That's why they're on every corner in LA, right? It's, oh yeah. You just go in there. You're chasing a dream. You're like, yeah, you, 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 whatever. Your post doesn't get enough likes. You're feeling sad. You're like, I'm gonna go to the psychic, and then they just tell you you're gonna be famous one day to keep you there. What a great spot, you know? Yeah. Legit person on the sidewalk. Of course, they're doing well, right? You know, they're gonna tell you you're doing good. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> so overall, overall, I don't get it. Because I am not one of these people who could, you know, live that lifestyle. Right. Because I just don't have money like they do. But overall, so far, it's interesting. And and I do, as much as I trashed her at first, Anna, the Russian. She's my favorite one. She is my favorite one. She doesn't put up with shit. No. She's and a badass. In, in fact, there's one part of the show where somebody, she's throwing a dinner party. Somebody shows up with a necklace that's worth like $2 million or something stupid like that. And she's got the exact same one. She's not wearing it, but she gets so pissed off that this chick is wearing this necklace to her dinner party that she's like went and rearranged the seating order for their dinner party. So that girl is like as far away as possible from her. Yeah. She isolated her and put her away from all of her friends because she bought the same necklace. Yeah. Like that's crazy. Power move a badass right there. Move. Wait till you see when she starts you're only done episode one. Yeah. It goes on. She gets more fun. There's a point where uh, there's a penis pump that gets thrown out of a window. What? I don't want to spoil much of the story, but she gets quite upset about that. Um, <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Time out. So Anna, the Russian, the crazy Russian lady. She's got a penis She's got pump a in penis. Her- <laughs> Classic <laughs> surgery. Hey, going on in LA. Yeah. She's got a penis pump in her shower. What? And uh, it ends okay. up flying out of a window. I don't want to ruin the whole thing. I don't want to spoil the show. So there's that. There's also like they do private shopping at her place. And uh, she does. She, uh, Wait, she, they do private shopping. Does she live in a oh, mall? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They get like Gucci to cu- just come over and just so they don't have to go to the store. You're going to get to this. And uh, she uh, let's just say she has no shame. <laughs> no shame whatsoever. OK. All right. Uh, I'm excited. I do like her off the, yeah, off the top. So, yeah. yeah. And uh, it's fun. It's a it's if you're looking for good trash television, Bling Empire is definitely an interesting one to watch. If you like Too Hot to Handle, if you liked, um, uh, what was that other one? What are you like a connoisseur of this trash? I make drinking games out of them. Okay, what are your drinking games that you make out of watching these trash? I oh, think that's just, an excuse for you to actually watch this. I think it's an excuse to drink. <laughs> <laughs> okay, either yeah, or, yeah, either yeah. or, yeah. Uh, it, I, as I said, it makes me feel better about myself when I watch trash television. I'm like, I don't suck that bad. <laughs> See, this made me feel horrible about myself and realize that I have nothing in my bank account right now compared to these people. That was a question I had written down. What's the most expensive thing you own? <laughs> <laughs> oh God, me? Yeah. And you can't say car or any sort yeah, of house. Okay. Um, God, I have, I have a pair of Jordans. That I haven't even opened up yet or wore. I just bought them and then realized I shouldn't have bought them because I was drunk when I purchased them. <laughs> and those are probably right now, they've actually gained in value. If you go to like, 
you know, those websites and that stuff that like resell shoes. Lynch, the big sneaker head. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Alexi's watched him wear Vessies to every single hey, episode. Man, but there's nothing wrong with Vessies. Vessies yeah. are great. No free ads. Um, <laughs> also, yeah, I would say my Jordans. Probably. They're on open. They're worth like... Like over That's a grand a sad now. That's realization. Your Jordans are the most expensive thing you own. Well, besides my car, yeah. <laughs> what about your computer? It's sitting right in front of you. It's depreciated in value. It really uh, has, but. I really think it's my computer or my phone. And yeah. I have an iPhone 7. <laughs> but as soon as, it's like a car though. As soon as you use it, it's not worth that much right. anymore. Or maybe my guitar. I did buy a fairly expensive guitar at the beginning of the pandemic that I can't play. It was a big purchase that it might be the guitar. That's your biggest purchase. I'm going to bring the guitar okay. to the next oh, week's cool. episode. Yeah. Do you guys like Thanks that? a lot, we'll Fred do all Penner. The music <laughs> myself. <laughs> uh, let's wrap this up. Thank you very much for uh, uh, watching and listening once again. We'll be back on Monday with another new episode. Uh, our big thank yous. Thank you to Jim Bob John for the uh, the music. Fantastic. All originals for the show. So catchy. Uh, thank you to Jessica Wong for all the graphics. Thank you to the comedy here often. Uh, podcast network which we are on they have a bunch of great shows alexi produces a ton of them check out alexi's podcast thank you to alexi thank you to 604 records for letting us use the space and uh as always thank you uh for listening and watching and uh still no word from chad kroger no uh the, but it's coming it's i have a i have a good feeling he will be a guest soon enough so chad kroger we will see you soon